The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got a little bit of volatility in these markets. We were just above 51.15 early this morning, 2:30 a.m. 4:20 a.m. We're trading at about 51.12. You back off to lows of about 5,090 in the S&Ps, and we are within about a point or two of where we closed yesterday's action. S&P is negative by two points, 51.02. NASDAQ 100, positive by single digits. You see a little bit of volatility in the overnight session as well. NASDAQ 100, slightly in the green. Dow, slightly in the red, still above 39,000. You're negative by 30 points in the Russell, positive by two. So pretty choppy market, pretty much flat across the board. Not for Bitcoin though. Bitcoin, up 400 bucks, we make a high. Pretty remarkable. Wednesday, almost 65,000. We're just chopping around in that area. You put Bitcoin on a daily. Quite a rocket ship, man. You're talking about a move from 40,000 to 65,000 over the span of about five weeks. Whew. Big numbers, man. Speaking of big numbers, crude. We're pushing highs, coming right into 80 bucks right now. There's your daily. You put it on a 15 minute. Crude, 79.97. Look at the run. We're up almost two bucks from where we were at about 3.45 a.m. this morning. Be remarkable if this complicates the inflation picture as we move forward with energy prices weighing. Gold, we're getting more action in gold. Look at the run ahead yesterday. Look at the acceleration you get overnight. 2047 was the low, 2066 is the high. We're above 2060 in the price of gold, up by $6 on the session right now. Silver, flat, but we got some volatility as well on silver, man. You talk about it. No Tim Bonds. A little bit of a reversal, I guess, of what you had happen yesterday, right? You did reach a higher high of 110.23. You're talking about a 10-year yield of 4.26. 4.26, the yield on the 10-year right now. We've pulled back about 10 ticks from where we were just at 6.45 a.m. this morning. So yields rising a bit and pretty remarkable that you're right back to where you were at 3.45 a.m. morning yesterday morning before we got the PCE number, which provided a little bit of volatility as well, of course, but nonetheless, just above four and a quarter percent. The yield right now in the 10 year, you take a look at the two year, you're talking about slightly higher price to the tune of one tick, but still pulling back from the highs we had in the same degree earlier this morning. So you're getting a little bit of lower price and higher yield creeping into things. Nonetheless, you jump over to the dollar index. Dollar spikes higher yesterday to 104.20. We're holding that at 104.15 right now in the dollar index. You put the dollar on a daily, I'm just kind of chopping around at this 50% retracement. You were at 107 in October. Trade all the way down to 101, just below that level, 100.61. You've traded back and you are chopping around at that 50% retracement. 104.15 right now in the dollar index. We jump over to the VIX. As the VIX, continue, VIX continues to trail off, 13.31. Lows for the week on the volatility index. Very little volatility priced into this market. You could say rightfully so as we're pushing 5,100 in the S&P. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. We're talking some yields, and why not? Let's talk some risks, even if you, even if you think they're tail risks, okay? Okay. Um, you have to listen to people who are involved in the finance industry to a certain degree. Now, there's two aspects of things. You always want to keep in mind that it's a big game to a certain degree. And game theory applies, right? And the position you're putting out there in the market, if you think it can move the market, then it would be in your best interest to put out the position that would move the market in the best interest of your underlying position, not to put out basically what you felt nonetheless right there's always people who are talking their book to a certain degree of what their trades are but <clears throat> you have the chief economist for Apollo talking about that the feds not going to cut rates in 2024 I chuckle a bit because think how far we've come in four to eight weeks can you imagine if he was saying that four to eight weeks ago he'd be laughed off man um, that's not the case right now we're pushing later and later in the year and even on Bloomberg I was surprised this morning in terms of just the general 
attitude of the possibility with a couple different guests on there talking about, you know, and and I've talked about this quote before. One analyst on the recent Fed decision said, you know, outside of the fact that we have this recency bias that we all feel like, you know, in the last 20 years, hold on, you know, if we have a problem, the Fed raises, and then what do they do? They slam rates back down as quick as they can because we're used to low rates. Maybe that's just not the case this time. I think that's a legitimate argument that you want to listen to and see where we go forward. Uh, but nonetheless, it's going to be the hot economy, okay? A reacceleration of the U.S. economy coupled with a rise in underlying inflation is going to prevent the Fed from cutting. The bottom line is that the Fed is going to spend most of 2024 fighting inflation. This is a note to clients on Friday that he put out. As a result, yield levels in fixed income will stay high. We were so low for so long. We'll see where we go from here. But nonetheless, you want to um, consider these numbers, right? PCE, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, running at 0.4% on a monthly basis, actually going up month over month in terms of where we've been. That alone, pretty startling when you put it in that perspective. All right, other stories. We'll talk about yields again. Uh, the reverberations throughout the economy, right? This one's just a big problem, man. Loan oversight. You think you want some loan oversight when you're in the banking business? You think you want loan oversight? When you overtake a troubled bank that's going to put you into the stratosphere of higher regulations, what is New York Community Bank doing, man? Yeah, they said it discovered material weaknesses in how it tracks loan risks, wrote down the value of companies acquired years ago, and replaced its leadership to grapple with the turmoil. The stock is plunging. And they have isolated issues that are only something they are dealing with. Yet it is indicative of some of the problems you have going on in especially some of the regional banks that are much more centralized in commercial lending in certain areas in particular. But this is a little bit of a perfect storm going on here. Now, that's a monthly, right? Quite a monthly, man. You go back. Look at where the stock was for so long. Now, you put it on the daily. This is when the banking crisis was beginning in March. The weekend exists from March 17th to March 20th. That's the news that comes out that they are buying Signature, okay, March 20th. It was a $2.7 billion deal. It somewhat saved the market. You spiked higher, you traded up to 14 bucks, and they're in much worse shape than even before then. And they have some issues, to put it lightly, man. And yeah, anytime you've got material weaknesses in how it tracks loan risks in this type of an environment, yeah, I'd be very skeptical of being anywhere near that company, man. Took a $2.4 billion goodwill impairment tied to past transactions. It won't affect its regulatory capital. And yeah, they're down dramatically. And they're going to have some issues. Who really knows what some of this real estate is worth, is worth right? Look at their outsized exposure to New York City multifamily rent regulations, man. How does that happen? One out of four dollars that they are renting is exposed to New York Sam, New York City multifamily rent regulations. And then you had the laws change that dramatically impacted the value of those companies. And that's the company that the Fed had by signature. Think about all that stuff all together. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's off by two. We've got a lot of equities to look at. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educate investors. You got S&Ps basically flat right now, trading at 5103. Back things up just from the last 10 days. You see the highs that we made. Uh, is that one week ago? I think it is. Yes, it sure is. One week ago on Friday, right? 51.23. That was following the huge acceleration and run that we got on NVIDIA, of course. And we're pushing those highs, man. You just got up to 51.16. Now, 51.23, we've talked about it a few times. It's an important price point because it's literally a full expansion of your A to B, C to D that you just got two consecutive 1,000-point rallies in the S&P. We'll see if we can blow through it, man. Um, maybe we can. Maybe the reason why the Fed's going to have a problem cutting is because market is exploding right now on whether it's profitability, whether it's growth, whether it's margins helped through, excuse me, productivity gains when you're talking about AI, etc. Pretty powerful stuff. You jump over to Microsoft shares this morning. They're down about $2 from Microsoft, 411.51. See you run up on Amazon last night? I'm not sure what exactly that was. If somebody in the den has exactly what was going on, I think it was just maybe the Dow action. So that was the last day of the month in February. And Amazon was added to the Dow Jones Industrial Average during the month. And so maybe you had some of that rebalancing that they had to get in there. Now, keep in mind, I think I've, I've covered it before. I'll, I'll try and pull up the numbers again. Very few funds are benchmarked to the Dow Jones Industrial Average versus the S&P. It's something like 10 billion to the Dow versus a number like 10 trillion, 11 trillion to the S&P. So yes, it's nice to be in there, but you don't get all the funds just benchmarked immediately coming at you like you do when you get into the S&P 500 to that degree. All right, it's Friday. We got a caller. We got our man, Jose from Lakeland. I appreciate it. Jose, good to talk to you this morning. What's happening, man? Top of the morning. It's open line Friday. I thought I'd buzz in. I love it, man. It's Friday. We got some beautiful weather coming into a good weekend. Always appreciate a good phone call. Always, always nice to see my producer send over your name, man. So we're talking interest yeah. rates. Boy, this conversation could go anywhere. Where are we going with interest rates, Jose? Well, I, I got a question for you. Um, uh, I forgot my question. No, wait a minute. It's coming. Um, is it possible? Well, I first want to say that Donald Trump. Um, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. So, is it possible that 
that so much money has been infused into the system during his four-year reign of terror that uh, he basically threatened the Fed's job every month. But anyway, that aside, that so much money has been infused that Biden, four years later, or for the last four years, has taken advantage of that, and that's why you have an economy that refuses to cool. And part two is, don't you think Wall Street is sending a message? Trump, we don't want you back. We don't want you beating China over the head with tariffs and upsetting things. Well, for the first part of that, man, taking politics aside, both he and Biden, Republicans and Democrats, were sending as much money out as possible, man. I mean, that's, you know, it, it really was. I mean, didn't Democrats even want even more than the deal they got, right, on the heels of whatever those deals? I almost couldn't keep track of so many deals going on. And then you had Trump sidestepping Congress and sending checks out to everybody himself. I mean, I don't know what would happen if Biden did that, right, vice versa. Um, once you're in office, of course, that's kind of what's going on. And, you know, looking back, of course, the economy rebounded astonishingly, astonishingly quickly. I mean, you get back all those jobs in the long term, we should be OK, but we got to get over this inflation deal, man. And maybe some of those stories we're hearing today about, you know, hold on, man, this story, this this battle is not as easy as you think it is. You know, I don't know if you heard the beginning of the program. You know, you got economists out there at Apollo, quite a firm with hundreds of billions of dollars talking about maybe we don't get and not even maybe saying, you know, we don't get cuts at all this year because we're still that's dealing with right. it, man. That's right. Yeah. I just read the headline and that's why yeah. I called. Uh, that's and, quite you know, a contrast from... You know, the Darth Vader of Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, saying, oh, you're going to start getting June cuts for this year. Four. Four quarter points. That's a, that's a whole point. Uh, you know, they have, they have that put out. Feasible. They've, it'd be interesting to see if they, if they get to that point, what happens with the data that makes them get to that point, first of all. Right? It'd have to be yeah. pretty consistently hot over the next two, three, four months. And right. If they get to that point, how do they make that pivot? Because they've been, I, I think they thought they were giving themselves some room when they're in January and February saying everybody on the committee pretty much believes that it's going to be appropriate to cut sometime this year. And you say, well, geez, it's January or February. That's not really much. But already it's March. Now the conversation is maybe it's June if we get it. Um, so follow that verbiage because they've put that out there. And if that's going to reverse, you will have to hear that corrected in the next three or six months which, as we know, time flies, man. Think about it. We're going to be in June in three months, right, Jose? It's like that is so quick, man. So we got to follow the data. We'll see where we go from there. You know, yeah, even this morning no, in agree. my group chat. I, just, I, 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 tell you, I tell you, agree, but I also think that in 2018, I think this Fed, this Jerome Powell wanted to raise rates and couldn't because of Trump, and he should have because I think inflation came in big time. And you're seeing the remnants or after effects of this much money infused in the system, it's, 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 it's a carryover effect. You, you still know, have I, inflation. It's interesting you're talking about it. There. Let's say it's interesting you're talking about it because even in my group chat this morning, they're having the discussion um, of pretty reasonable people. Not on, not on you know, we got, we got Republicans, we got Democrats, man, but nobody too far potentially might, you know, uh, reasonable takes on things on both sides, which is where people usually fall, right? Not the outliers that get a lot of the attention these days. Um, but having the discussion of whether Chairman Powell, you know, um, serves at the pleasure of the president and, and that's going to factor into what he's doing or, or he's well, worried about his legacy. Um, and the one thing is, right, so you make that point. I know a lot of people would agree in terms of how he acted under Trump. Which, how's, how's that going to play for Biden? Because they think the same thing. So how does that make sense in terms of, you know, well, maybe it's that you serve at the pleasure of the president, you're always trying to do whatever those opinions are, okay? But here's, if you think that's where he went on that side of things, if he takes too long on the other side, that's the one thing, because his case is, I had to be sure, okay? So if you believe him at that, maybe he goes the same way on the, the other side, and if he has to be sure, you know, maybe you don't get those types of cuts. It's it's a bummer it's going to come into politics no matter what because because it's too easy to make those accusations no matter what when you got a presidential election. And this stuff is so important, man. But we got yeah. we got some serious inflation problems going on right now. And, you know, it's you you add up. I know, you know, you add up those numbers, man. You're talking about 20 to 30 percent inflation over two, three years. Just staggering destruction for people who are savers in this market. I guess so. I guess so. I don't worry about any of it. I know the big guy upstairs is providentially ordering the world. Whatever is, will be.
the hot take from Lakeland on a Friday morning, baby. <laughs> Jose, I appreciate it as always, man. You have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much for calling Thank in. Always nice to hear from you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, we're coming into politics season, baby. Um, and it is remarkable, right, us having that discussion today. And it's interesting when you just think about, um, you know, we all have conflicts of interest, okay? And even somebody who is aware of a conflict of interest, the whole point is you can't take that conflict of interest out. That's the reason why the soundest legal minds, supposedly, of our country, our generation, Supreme Court justices, they can't take a conflict of interest out. They're supposed to um, take themselves out of the scenario because you can't do that. Is it a conflict of interest when the Fed serves at the pleasure of the president? You know, it just opens itself up, but boy, I don't know, risking your legacy, does Chairman Powell wanna be the Fed chair that let generational inflation rage versus making sure it gets it under control? Well, we'll be back for the open, folks, stay tuned. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. You catch a little bit of a lift on the opening bell. S&P is now up by five points, trading at 5,109. NASDAQ 100 up by 30, 18,116. Dow slightly in the red this morning, off by 45. That's one-tenth percent. Russell in the positive as well. Bitcoin back above 63,000, 63,195. Keep your eye on crude. We're inching towards 80 bucks, 79.53. 
Uh, if you haven't filled up your gas tank, probably time to get out there and fill that gas tank out. From a risk-reward side, you're potentially facing higher prices. And look at the run we've had, man. Since February 5th, you had a price tag of 71.41. Those are daily bars, and you're looking at higher highs and higher lows, inching higher, closing out the week near $80. And as I speak, crude rising higher, 79.65 for the price of crude, as that could potentially complicate the inflation picture. Gold, up by $8 at 2062 If you've never tried out the Gold Report, folks, great time to do it. My dad's got new issues out on Monday. Sign up. You'll get access to all the archives. Look at this gold consolidation. 2062, we jump to yields right now. Go back to a short-term time frame. 10-year, chopping around at 110.13 right now. As I mentioned, you're talking about a 10-year yield of about 4.26%. 4.26%. All right, we jump back to New York Community Bank. Might be New York community bankrupt. I know, right? Uh, yeah, you go lower on the open, man. I mean, percentage-wise, when I came on the air, we were almost at $3.80, and we're at $3.40, folks. That's a 10% drop since I came on the air, okay? Now, here is why. Let's break down some of this action. And it's, it's astounding, okay? That's one way to put it. It is astounding. Now, this is just a random Yahoo article I found from February 11th, okay? And this had to do when they came out with their prior earnings, right? They recalibrated their loan losses. That occurred on January 11th. This article that I'm reading you, February 11th or 12th, okay? So already destruction going on here, but they were talking about why. And it's pretty remarkable when you look at it. I referenced the law, okay, that was passed in 2019. So here's how it goes. The region's bank's biggest loan exposure is to apartments. Half of that portfolio is tied to scores of multifamily complexes in the Big Apple where annual rent increases are regulated by the government. Okay, now, as a quick aside, rent control, the goal to keep housing affordable for the people who live there is great. But you know how you do that? Through government subsidies. You don't through it, do it through forcing private owner, like, owners to subsidize it because as you rent control it who's subsidizing that it's the owners of these buildings okay so you can different regulations could get that done there's no reason why only the owners of these buildings are subsidizing affordable housing in one of the wealthiest cities in the world nonetheless okay so and this is what has investors worried these properties can end up being a worth a lot less than they used to because of high interest rates and new limits on rent increases okay now, they talk about it a little bit more. Okay, they go public in 1993. Stay with me here. Here we go. Almost half of all apartments in New York City are rent stabilized. Designed to keep some of the units affordable, especially in older buildings put up before 1974. What made the multifamily complexes valuable for so long were local laws that gave landlords greater freedom to hike rents to match market prices, making these properties low but stable streams of income. Now, I don't understand the fundamentals enough to understand how you have some rent controls prior to that law allowed it. Nonetheless, okay, 2019 law by the state of New York limited the rent increases, squeezing profits for building owners and giving them less incentive to fix the properties up. Then you get the rise of inflation and interest rates at the same time, making maintenance and debt tied to these buildings more expensive. What happens? Yeah, you got a big problem, okay? That's what happened at the end of last year when the FDIC sold $15 billion in loans backed by the rent-regulated buildings that were once held by Signature. Okay, the discount was 39% on just that 15 billion. Yeah, and that's the challenge for New York Community Bank, okay? And I just talked about earlier in terms of the concentration that they have for their loans on that aspect of things. Yeah, New York Community Bank said last week, its rent-regulated portfolio had a loan-to-value ratio of 58%, and the percentage of non-performing loans was a minimal 0.52%. However, criticized loans accounted for 14% or $2.4 billion. Now, you take that, okay, and you add it into the equation that the fact that they have material weaknesses in terms of keeping track of their loans 
you don't want to be anywhere near this equity, folks, okay? The writing is on the wall, unfortunately. And quite a bummer that they were the ones that came in for signature, and that's the last part of this conversation is, you already know there's gonna be a problem with commercial. The law had already passed in 2019. They're the bank that got chosen to take over signature, even not taking over those bad loans that they talked about in the article I just referenced. Nonetheless, they're a problem bank. And if the Fed was gonna allow them to be the ones that took over signature, then what else might be happening is just to keep your eye up. And it's not a doomslayer, it's not a conspiracy theorist deal, but you know, for this bank to be the one that takes over their signature and to have huge underlying losses and have material weaknesses in terms of, of controls at that bank, maybe everything isn't as good as it seems even across the board. S&Ps though, up by four as we march on, to put it lightly. Okay, what else do we have going on in this market besides New York? Yeah, quite quite the headline. Yeah, you got Elon suing OpenAI. And this is an interesting opinion piece over here on Bloomberg. So we can break down the news. Nonetheless, this is an opinion piece. And it is interesting, right? OpenAI, it's founded as this uh, nonprofit, okay, for the benefit of humanity. In reality... OpenAI has been transformed into a closed source de facto subsidiary of the largest tech company in the world, Microsoft. You have to kind of agree. They have a non-voting board seat now, Microsoft, right, after the whole debacle that happened. Um, he's got his own goals in this lawsuit, but he's using an avenue that probably has a, a level of truth there. If you really believe that OpenAI is a nonprofit in the interest of the benefit for humanity and not somehow... Um, for Microsoft, then I don't know, because it seems like they are synonymous with Microsoft from here on out. What this article talks about as well, though, is just this week, for instance, Mistral, I'm not sure what that is, one of the world's hottest AI startups, okay, look to be destined to follow the same pattern. It's built AI models for nearly, nearly as capable of ChatGPT for a fraction of the price. It made them open source, meaning that anyone can use them for free if they have the computing resource. The company tells fierce independence, strong commitment to open, portable AI on its website, has even put its models on torrent websites that people use to download pirated content, all right, offering those models out there. But guess what? Not anymore. They've got an investment from Microsoft. And guess what? Now? No. It's only available to customers of Microsoft's Azure cloud service. And that's only from Microsoft, I think, putting 15 million or something. What do they put in? 16 million is all they put um, into the $500 million startup. And guess what? Their latest model, the most up-to-date model, customers of the Azure cloud service. We'll see where that goes. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot more to talk about. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the 10 year pulling back in price, hinting to a little bit of a higher yield in this market right now. And that's giving the dollar a little bit of a boost as well. We got the 10 year right now, 4.28. We're sitting at about 4.26 when I began the program. You jump over to that dollar. There's your dollar spike, basically above pre market highs. We're at 104.20 right now in the dollar. That's going to have gold pulling back a bit from the highs we had at 2065 prior in the session. We're sitting at 2060 right now in that gold contract. And you got the S&Ps. They give it back a little bit. We hit 5110 on the open. We're trading right now at 5105. You jump over to the NASDAQ, 18,131, up by a quarter percent in the NASDAQ. The Dow off by 64 points. Amazon shares basically flat. You jump over to Apple, down about a quarter percent. A little bit of weakness in Apple right now. You jump over to Microsoft. There's a bid for you, man. Microsoft up by three tenths percent. This thing just traded up almost three dollars, four dollars on the open. Look at that acceleration. Meta shares up by one point eight percent. Man, oh man, look at it. AMD up by three point one percent off the heels of quite the acceleration yesterday. You jump over to the analyze tab, and you're talking about a company that's at three hundred and twenty billion dollars. The headlines were three hundred billion in terms of the market cap. How that company accelerated above 300 billion, and just like that, you got another 20 billion out there for AMD. You jump over to Tesla. Yeah, pushing almost lows of the week back into your Monday acceleration. You're at 198 for Tesla. You were at 204 just yesterday. You jump over to Nvidia, 802, up another 1.5 percent as growth stocks continue higher. Google shares this morning down about four tenths percent for Google shares. All right, other companies we got moving. Dell. Uh, with their numbers last night, and you talk about it, man. Check it out. Up 28%. I was talking to Kevin Hinks yesterday, saying, man, it is pretty remarkable. So this company goes private. They go public again. It's been quite a run from 32 bucks in the lows of October 2022 and 30, what's the low there? $36 about a year ago to 121. You're up by 28% right now, right now. And the numbers that they put out with, um, yeah, 220 a share. The market was looking for a buck 73, and they beat on revenue as well. 22.3 billion versus about 22.1. In the stock plows, I imagine the forward guidance is also enjoyable to this market if you're trading to that degree to the upside. Quite the move. That's the weekly, but it's all happening today, man. There's your gap to 130 on the open. You're trading right now up 27% for Dell shares. You got Hewlett Packard. They're up by 1.3% on their numbers. A little bit of volatility, as you see, down to 14.12. They get it back on the open. Look at that. You're up by 1% for Hewlett Packard. The quote there is mixed earnings. They topped analyst expectations for earnings per share by three pennies, but you miss on revenue. 
weaker guidance for the quarter. Nonetheless, seems like the market was a little bit worried, man. You spike lower, you spike lower pre-market, and you get it all back on the open. All right, let's see what else we got going on in this market for headlines. We talked about Elon. We talked about New York Community Bank. Yeah, there's your headline for AMD I talked about, right? Just like that, we're at 320 billion. Over 300, you got, you got AI stocks raging again. Meta up by 1.6. Look at that acceleration, man. 500 bucks from Meta shares. Absolutely remarkable. Microsoft is flat, but they get a bid on the open as well. Salesforce out with their numbers this week. Thought to be disappointing. And just like that, you're up another 6 tenths percent for Salesforce, trading at 310.56. Pretty remarkable. Yeah, we talked um, pretty much, excuse me, pretty much the individual equities. I mean, we got AMD up there higher, right? Plug power. Let's see, they're a little bit lower. It's interesting about this one, man. Back in the, the heyday of, they're out with their numbers down 9.3%. Back in the heyday of Robinhood and meme, when Robinhood was all the rage as, as the pandemic was shutting down, retail traders were coming in. I decided to open an account to see what Robinhood was about, okay? And one of the things they do is they give you free shares. Look at, I got this marked, this, this consolidation. They give you free shares. And the free shares that they gave me were of plug. Yeah, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. I remember, it was at like four bucks or five bucks. So they basically gave me $4 in the form of a share of plug. And I sold it immediately, right? And it ran up to 75. I said, ah, oh, that, that, that lottery ticket would have paid off if I held it. You know, and ironically, I was like, how ironic that they gave me that. Well, look where the equity is, folks. Look where it is, all right? Absolutely remarkable. They've given it all back from 75 bucks, down another 10% today. Plug, and yeah, they get some problems, man. Disappointing results, hydrogen fuel cell company. Um, they say they have sufficient cash to keep operating despite a wider than expected loss of $2.30 a share for the year 2023. In its third quarter regulatory filing, the company had disclosed doubts about its ability to continue as a going concern, okay? Yeah, it has sufficient capital to keep operating despite a wider than expected loss for the year. And in that third quarter filing, the company already disclosed they had doubts. So if they already had disclosed doubts about existing, and you're losing more than the market even thought you were going to lose, what's that mean? It means you're probably going out of business. And we got the S&Ps giving it back a little bit. 5102. We'll probably just chop around 5100 today. You know, the market sitting at a pretty lofty level. Need to digest some of those gains. This is the first trading day of 2023. Okay. You might get a little bit of buying in there with the first day but we will see how it goes. We're sitting at 15, excuse me, 5,100 in the S&Ps and 18,108 right now in the NASDAQ. We check back on the New York Community Bank as they chop around down about 25% on the session. And let's jump around to some of the other companies. Warner Brothers Discovery, down about 1.3%. They got Dune 2 coming out this weekend. It's supposed to take in somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to $80 million. We'll see how Warner Brothers does on the heels of that news, but they have been struggling, to put it lightly, down to 825 on their numbers just a week ago for Warner Brothers, down another 1.3% today. We jump over to Netflix. Not the same for Netflix, man. This stock just goes up, up a quarter percent for Netflix shares right now. You jump over to Disney, hanging at about 111 for Disney, pushing near the highs that they had at 112.92 about a couple weeks ago, as you got a market flat 29 minutes into the trading day. We keep our eye on yields. All right, this is what to keep your eye on, man. And this is why I jump back and forth, left and right, right? You'll see me pull up yields many times throughout the hour. You gotta keep your eye on them, man. I know I like to talk about the news of the day, but really, this is a trading show, okay? It's not a news show. We incorporate the fundamentals with the technicals, but keep your eye on what's going on with yields right now, man, as we are spiking higher. On a day when we are having the conversation shift, potentially, is that where the conversation's gonna shift to? We're at 4.29 right now. We're up four basis points from where I started the program. Four and a quarter to 4.29%. Looks like we're on our way to 4.3% yet again as we get higher yields. That, of course, putting strength in the dollar. There you go. We're spiking a 104.27 right now in the dollar. And that's going to um, 
have gold pulling back a bit. There you go to 2054. All things considered, we're right back to where we were yesterday morning when you got that first acceleration in gold to 2054 right now. A little bit of volatility in yields on the first trading day in March. We got a Fed meeting 19 days from right now, March 20th. Yeah, but they're going to take some time. That's for sure. Markets flat. NASDAQ up by 30 right now. S&Ps are flat. Yields spiking higher. Dollar spiking higher. We'll be right back, folks. One more segment. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps flat right now, trading at 5104. You see a little bit of volatility. We spike higher on the open. We make that high within the first five minutes of the trading session at 5111.75. We pulled back a bit, 5104, but as I mentioned, pretty much flat. NASDAQ 100, slightly in the green. Dow right now, slightly in the red by 129 points or a third of a percent. And the Russell, slightly in the red as well. Bitcoin. Backs off a bit from the 63,000, but quite a week for Bitcoin, man. 62,560. Seems like it should challenge those all-time highs, right? We're within a stone's throw. 70,000, about. Yeah, I got to back it up. 69.3 is the high. You had the high made in April of 2021 of 65.5. You just got to 64.990. And the all-time high, 69,355. So 70,000. Put it on your Put it on your radar. Quite a round number, as our man Basil Chapman would say. And we check back in. 
New York Community Bank down 25.7, and we go back to yields on a short-term basis. And we've stemmed that initial spike right now, but still a little bit higher. And that's a good way to ease into the last part of the program. We talk about Fed speak, man. Keep your, keep your spikes up today because we got more than a half dozen officials speaking Friday. Yeah, Fed speak. A slate of them is what we get in there. Uh, yeah, and we got a new month, March 1st. We got a bunch of Fed speak going on today. I think they had it down here. Yeah, you had Thomas Barkin already saying that markets are pricing in fewer rate reductions this year in response to economic data, not because the central bank is winning a battle with investors. I wonder how that goes there. You had Torsten Slock that I talked about, Apollo Management, chief economist, saying that maybe we get no cuts this year. And um, yeah, we get a lot of Fed speak today. The numbers in there in terms of where we go. I thought they had them listed here. Maybe that was a different article. But nonetheless, keep your eye out. You'll get a lot of Fed headlines. You'll get a lot of Fed speak today. Don't expect, don't expect any surprises, folks. The next meeting is March 20th. The only conversation right now is June. They're going to stay where they are. And where they are is we're in no rush. Yeah, we think we'll get some cuts sometime this year. It'll be appropriate to begin cutting at some time this year. They're going to stick with that at least for the next month or two as they march forward and see some of that data. Folks, happy March. Thanks for kicking off the trading month right here at TFNN. Stay tuned for Basil Chapman. He's up next, folks.